Hi, I'm Daniel Levinson, this is Rape Your Wit, and welcome to Rape Your Wit Witticisms. We've talked about how to load and unload, and we've talked about single action and double action, and I've even shown some blanks being fired, but let's talk about differences in blanks, what they look like and different types there are, and then do a few more firing to give you a, an opportunity to see when a blank gun goes off, where can the vent go? Where can the gas be vented, I should say? So it's important because if you're not careful, you could really hurt yourself or somebody else uh, or the audience. So let's take a look at what blanks are, how, how they appear when they're fired and before they're fired. And finally, I'll demonstrate some blank firing. Okay, so you can see I've, I put a few here, but I'm gonna start talking about uh, ones that we see a lot, these are acorn blanks. And I just want to show you what they look like before they're fired. See that? And when they fire, they generally blow open like this. But the way to know there have been, they've been hit on the rim. And why is that important? Because this is a rimmed blank. And they're very tiny, very, very tiny. And you can see, you can imagine how hard it is. You can see how, how to manipulate it, you know, you can lose them. So these you'll find in all sorts of starter pistols. And uh, they have a sharp crack and I'll be demonstrating the sound of that later in the video. And I guess that's all I can say about that. They do come in larger versions. Here is a larger 22, a lot easier to hold. Fired, you can see it's blown open. And this one happens green. It tells you uh, what the power is. Different ones have different colors. And you can see where the rim was struck. And this is what they look like closed up before they're fired. And the rim is unstruck. And you'll notice this one has no color. So not everyone is color coordinated with their power. And you'll even notice manufacturers have a slightly different look. So you want to make sure you know what you're getting yourself into when you're using your blank. And you should always test fire them before you need them so that you're getting the right amount of bang for your buck. These are also extremely popular. These are 380s. Again, uh, a much more powerful blank compared to the 22, and built really for blank guns, revolvers. How do you know? Because they are rimmed, and the rim stops the blank from being pushed through the cylinder. And if you look at my earlier video, when you see me loading, you can see how the rim sits uh, when you put it into the cylinder. Here we are again. Here's the other one, fired blown open, but unlike the ones that are struck on the rim, this is a center fire. See, you want to look for the primer, which is right in the center there, being struck. That's how you know center fired have been fired. This is a good giveaway, and you'll notice how dark it is compared to the clean of the brass, but that's not always the case. You might get ones that are fairly closed up and you would not know they were fired at all. See how they see the cylinder and see the rim on a revolver cartridge? I'm just going to put it in there. See how it sits nice and snug? Look what happens when I take this, which is about the same size. Look what happens. This is rimless and this is for a pistol. Look at that. Zoop. Oh, gone. So you really need the rim for the revolver to function properly. It's another version of a rimmed cartridge. This is a 38, so it's even a little bigger than the 380. And you can see I have two types. Again, the color tells you the power. What's interesting is this one, you can see they've been fired, right? That one lost its primer. That's how powerful it was. And it sheared off the rim inside the revolver when it was fired. This one, you can see, primer got struck. But otherwise, it looks almost identical until you look really carefully and see the split here. 
See, I can put my nail inside the split. So again, you, you really need to be careful by looking at the primer, has this been fired or not? So again, these are rimmed, uh, disposable, because they're made out of plastic, uh, blank ammunition for revolvers. But pistols, pistols are generally rimless. See how there's an indentation inside rather than a rim that overhangs the rest of the brass? You can see where it's been fired. Harder to tell, though, if it's been fired or not, right? Look. Hit, but almost pristine, not hit. Still indented inside. But different manufacturers, sometimes the, uh, the green of this style is pushed right up. So this actually was balled out a little bit originally. So again, you need to check, has it been fired or not? So this is for a pistol. See that? This is a different type of rimmed cartridge. These go to the exact same pistol, excuse me, same revolver. They're the same caliber, and if you looked very carefully, they're about the same size, but this is crimped, and that has a paper wad cardboard right there. So you can see they really do come in all sorts, crimped wad. These are two more inserts. This one, if you saw the previous video, goes to my Sport Away, my Takarov single action pistol and allows me to put a 22 into it. And this goes into my single action Colt. And again, I can put a 22 into it, allowing a lot of flexibility in the pistol firing different uh, strength blanks. The first shot I made was with an acorn, and the second was with this longer 22. I want to talk about how some blanks will behave differently, even though they're the same caliber, fired out of the same caliber blank gun, but they'll behave differently. See how this one's been all torn up? And this one has been barely dimpled. So this one was fired from the self-loading pistol, this one from the full auto. Just something to know. And that's why it's a really good idea to practice with all of your props before you expect to either perform live or in film. Know how they function so you do not have unpleasant surprises. Shotguns. So I have four things in my hand here. 
This is full of powder. You can see there's the wad right there. This is immensely loud. Right? And I would not use this in a small theater, to say the least. Uh, in fact, the only time I've used it inside uh, for a live performance was in an opera house, because that's how much uh, noise this created. But I might want to fire a shotgun using a smaller caliber. So these are inserts that let me put them into my shotgun. This one is for a 22, and this one is for a 380 blank pistol round. I should say a 380 uh, revolver round because it's rimmed, and again, it means that I can pop this in like that. See that? One more time, I could just pop it in like that. 22 pops on, and you can just take it out when you want to do a 22. So it goes in, comes out. This is not a blank at all. It's a snap cap. So when you are working with a shotgun that you want to release the tension on the spring, you can pull the trigger on this and you won't have a dry fire and you won't have a, a sudden snap. And you can get these snap caps in pretty much every caliber you can imagine. So if you want to practice uh, dry firing the firearm safely or if you want to uh, give an actor an action but definitely don't want to use a blank, these are not a bad solution. That little rubber internal here allows uh, the firing pin to strike something without causing undue wear and tear. First, I'll fire just a primer, then a 22 in this insert. Then I'm going to fire this pistol round. See how it just goes in? And finally, a full round, which will bring the house down, I am sure. Kevin Robinson loves it when I fire these. He giggles and jumps up and down. I'd like to show you these. This is the original 3030 non fired blank. This one, you can see it's been altered somewhat. You can see it's been fired. But that wouldn't surprise you, right? However, these are both of the same blank. Look what happened. Look how powerful. I have no idea. They came out of the exact same uh, package as the other one. I have no idea why these blew open, except they clearly were stronger, hotter than this one. So again, it gives you an idea. Why do you never point a blank at someone? I'm not 100% sure brass didn't come out of that barrel. Is that crazy? So things to know. You never point a blank gun at a performer, an audience, a crew. Be very careful of the ultimate target of where the gas and potential energy will be sent. So that took me a bit of time to uh, collect all the bits and pieces that the shotgun did. And remember, there's no shot. 
in those popper rounds. Now, there's just powder, and uh, you can see where some of the unburnt powder impacted on the paper. So you can understand again why you don't want to aim these blanks at people. So when firing, or excuse me, let me correct myself, when creating the illusion that you're firing from at one character, so when we're trying to create the illusion one character is shooting another character, you are offline. I generally like to have my performers in parallel to a live audience so that I'm not projecting the energy towards the audience. And it also means that when the muzzle is slightly upstage away from audience, they can't see into it versus slightly downstage and they can look up the muzzle. So I feel it's a little safer and a little more comfortable for the audience. And for film, because we don't have bifocal vision and there's lots of different tricks you can do with the camera, you can make it look like you're firing straight down the center while still keeping your performer and crew, performer, performers and crew entirely safe. There's also something to be said about uh, firing into a locked camera where you have some sort of plexiglass shield that protects the, the equipment and you don't have any people behind the camera while it's rolling. So there's lots of ways about it, and I'll leave it at that.